All right, so we're going to take a quick look at the export nodes that I created for Substance Designer. So I'm going to start a new graph here. And this new graph is going to be empty, just 1024 or whatever. And um, so once you install these things, it's real easy to install them. Basically, it's the SBS files. You need to go to uh, your projects here in Preferences, Library. And uh, create a library folder somewhere and just place the SBS files in it. And then reference it here, um, save it, apply it, and restart uh, Substance. So next time you start Substance up, you should be able to hit spacebar and just search Master Material. You'll see we'll have Master Material and Master Material combined. So the first one is kind of like the core of every, what I built everything off of. And so what this node does is it's very similar to the base material node that came with Substance, right? And so very similar to this one. The only problem with base material, and this is why I made my own, is that you have to switch between metal rough and specular gloss. So if I'm working in something like, say, Blender, and I need metal rough, but then I want to go over to, like, Unity or CryEngine, and I need specular gloss, I want to have my materials at least closely match each other, right? And so uh, what this does is it you can feed in a PBR metallic rough material or textures, and then it'll output both spec gloss and PBR rough at the same time. Uh, but you can enable and disable inputs. So if you want like base color inputs or roughness, normal, whatever the case. Uh, but you can also change things here with sliders. So you can make things metallic or not metallic, right? And so these are also, you can expose these. So if you're going to push this over to Substance Painter and you want to have the ability to change this later on, you could do that. Okay. But uh, so this is really the core of it right here is that you can just right click, create and create output nodes. And so that's why I named it export nodes because that's really what it's meant to do for the most part. And so I can right click the, the master material here, drag it over, drop it. And uh, you can see we can make adjustments over here with this now. So turn that base color and stuff off real quick. Drag it over there. I think, what am I using right now? Okay, PBR rough. Okay, so it's just pure white right now, but we can change things if we want. Turn, make it metallic, turn the roughness down. You'll see it previews over here by just you know, right-click, dragging it over there. Okay, and so when you try to export this, what's going to happen is you go right-click your graph, export outputs, and you can see you get all these different uh, presets, right? And I included ORM on this because I actually prefer using ORM in Blender. So I'll split the um, occlusion roughness metallic pack texture just like Unreal Engine, and then I'll use that in uh, Blender the same way. You can separate colors basically in Blender. Okay. And so you can add additional nodes here if you wanted to do Unity or you want to do Unreal, type them in, right? And then you can also do like uh, CryEngine as well. There's two for CryEngine there. And so, uh, but basically, use Unreal real quick. These are just uh, extensions. That's really all they are. So you could take base color, plug base color in there. Um, opacity is actually part of base color, just so you know. Um, but I included it as a channel export as well. And this just keeps everything working, right? So if you're going to do multiple extra outputs, you can do this. Scattering. See, scattering is optional. You don't have to include it. And then um, ORM. If you want to just pass through an ORM to a... Uh, this node, you can do that. That's also kind of optional there because we already had it over here. But the th the thing about this is this is all um, prefix or suffixed. So when we output these, you'll see that everything's tagged with UE. So it's going to go UE, base color, and then whatever else needs to um, happen there. So base color SSS. So this is the packed subsurface scattering base color. This is just regular base color. So if we had fed uh, scattering, that would work, right? We have plugged in a uh, subsurf, right? So we don't need this one. If we delete it, it won't show up in the outputs no more. So when you try to output, this is what you'll get, right? You just get um, UE down here, ORM normal, base color. Cool. All right. So you could do this if you just need a specific engine texture and you don't want to go through the process of this. As a matter of fact, you don't even need these at all. You could just plug in the specific one you need. So you could do like Unity, HDRP, and then just start plugging it in, however you see fit, right? Base color, base color, and all that fun stuff. So with that out of the way, 
what's going to end up happening more than likely if you're like me anyways uh, i included another one because i don't want to hook those up every time and it gets annoying uh, i included another one called master material combined now you need to have all these sps files um, in your library in order for this one to even show up and work right the thing here is that it's the same node basically the only difference is that you know you could still enable things as needed roughness normals whatever right and so you could do all that change the parameters it behaves exactly the same as the master material because it's technically inside of it so and you can right click and drag and drop this as well and so if we make it metallic and turn the roughness down you see it's updating but when we export or we right click create output nodes uh, you can see everything comes in now right so all the crimes and stuff all the unity and everything's over here and that's why these are all suffixed hdrp urp uh, um, ue and then of course um, cry's got a uh, cry added to it right so export outputs as bitmaps we now get all of these and so they're in little categories so you can easily get through this a little bit faster if needed now these will also show up in substance player so when you're sharing uh, SPSAR files with people and they load it up in a substance player the um, this all show up but it won't be in categories I don't know why it doesn't do that but you can just dis enable and disable what you want here in uh, painter at least so so if you just wanted like a couple standard materials you could go through and figure out which ones you need real quick you just you know, check or uncheck them I guess like none might be easier this way right maybe we don't need the uh detail right but we want base color you know like your standard ones maybe like base color orm emissive uh, and normal direct x for up oh, for blender maybe gl right so direct x for unreal uh yeah there we go so we'll get our cry engine textures we'll get the ones we can use in Blender or wherever else that are PBR rough. Uh, you can set your output area. Now just keep in mind the uh, CryEngine ones, they want to use .tiff usually. Uh, when you're in the engine and it converts it to uh, EDS files or whatever it was, um, what ends up happening is if it's like a PNG or something, it doesn't transfer to the alphas. Okay, so if you have an alpha transparency and, or you have like a, a packed texture, it does CryEngine doesn't like convert it, I guess, if it's certain formats but tiff it will so that's why you do that so anyways um all you do is you pick a folder and go to my desktop here it's just gonna throw them all into this folder basically so and then export bam done so all of them are generated so now when we go to the desktop you'll see it come in like so so new graph that's the name of the graph right new graph base color help uh, we got CryEngine Albedo, CryEngine DDNA, Displace. So you could further just, uh, you know, refine these, I guess, if you needed to. So you could say all the CryEngine stuff, just take it real quick and, you know, toss it in a folder. So now you got your base maps, CryEngine, boom. You don't ever have to think about this again, like how you're doing all this stuff here. Of course, if you were to export again, obviously, um, it's going to go ahead and do this number. You're going to have to reorganize it every time. I was trying to see if I could set up a way that it, it would create folders on export, but it, I guess it doesn't do that. So um, you just replace files and call it a day, right? So yeah, still a little bit, a little upkeep and work to uh, utilize this thing, but it's not nearly as bad as reconfiguring and setting up all these different kinds of outputs whenever you're working on certain projects and things like that, right? Especially if you're freelancing, like this is a huge one, right? It's annoying having to uh, switch between uh, specular gloss and PBR rough and trying to get things to uh, coordinate with each other, right? So anyways, that's it for this one, guys. And uh, I'll check you out in the next one. All right, take care.